Hey everyone, it's Matt here, and today I am super excited to be bringing you my review of the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, before we get into anything, I just want to give you guys kind of my specs for the machine that I have here because that's what I'm basing my review off of. This is my personal machine. I've used it for about two months, and the configuration I have is the 2799 model that comes with the 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i9 processor um, that has eight cores, 16 threads. I have the 16 gigs of memory. I also have the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M graphics with four gigs of memory, and I have the one terabyte SSD. Now this is the exact pre-configured model on the Apple site. I haven't made any changes to it, so that's kind of an idea of what I was working with to give you this review. Now the first thing you're gonna notice about this 16 inch MacBook Pro is that it's not very different looking from the 15 inch it replaces, or the 13 inch MacBook Pro that it sits alongside. Now, I don't really think that's a bad thing. The build quality is outstanding, probably still one of the best on the market, and it's a great looking machine in my opinion. But what is new are the refinements that Apple has implemented to it, and kind of the why behind these refinements. And now I say that because the changes Apple has made with this MacBook Pro that we're gonna go over today are really indicative of the fact that Apple really seems to be listening to its customers. Now that's important because the previous generation MacBook Pros haven't really been the best notebook for creative professionals. And when you're asking the kind of money that Apple does for these notebooks, that's a big deal. But I'm happy to say that most of this review is gonna focus on a lot of the changes and refinements and kind of remedies to those problems that the previous generation has had. And I think ultimately they shape up to make this laptop really truly one of the best laptops for creative professionals on the market. Now right out of the gate I just want to say that there are some of these refinements, new features and stuff like that that weren't necessary but very welcome and there are other refinements and improvements that were absolutely needed and I think it goes without saying that the keyboard is one of them. If you aren't aware the previous generation of MacBook Pros suffered from very, very bad keyboards. At the time, Apple had what was called the butterfly keyboard. And basically, it meant that these keyboards were very unreliable and were very uncomfortable to type on for long periods of time. But thankfully, I could say that that is not the case with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So the new Magic Keyboard features a inverted T arrow key arrangement, as well as a physical escape key, which a lot of people were asking for and most importantly, a reversion back to scissor switch mechanisms that give the keyboard one millimeter of key travel and make them way more reliable for long-term use. Now, the physical escape key wasn't absolutely necessary, but it's nice to have, and I think the same for me can at least be said for the inverted T arrow key arrangement, but man, the one millimeter of travel is a must-have improvement over the butterfly keyboards, and it makes us things so much better to type on for extended periods of use and it also gives me a lot of peace of mind that i can keep this macbook for years and not really have to worry about it getting messed up for no good reason now while we're on the topic of the keyboard i do want to mention one little unnecessary but appreciated change and that is the application of a matte finish to the touch id sensor it's not going to change the way the touch id sensor works it's just as reliable just as quick I just think it looks nice, wanted to bring it up. All right, so while we're on the topic of unnecessary but welcome and appreciated changes, let's talk about the new audio system that's in this MacBook Pro. So this 16-inch MacBook Pro features a new six-speaker audio system. And the big kind of emphasis is being placed on the force-canceling woofers. Now, these force-canceling woofers are an extra set of subwoofers that are downward-facing that act as a means of reducing distortion and improving bass. And let me just tell you that these are easily the best sounding speakers I've heard in a mobile device, period. And I just can't get over how good this sounds, even at max volume. There's no distortion, the bass is amazing, and most importantly, the mids and the highs remain incredibly, incredibly crisp. I would even go as far as to say that these are the best laptop speakers on the market. And I think most tech YouTubers would agree with me on the statement that these are probably gonna set the standard for laptop speakers for years to come, just like Apple did with the trackpad that they put in their MacBooks. 
Now, in addition to the amazing speakers Apple has put in this MacBook, they have also included a new set of studio quality microphones. So basically, there are three microphones, all of which are located close to each other in the left speaker grill on the keyboard deck, and they sound very, very good. All right, so this is a quick test of the studio quality microphones in the 16-inch MacBook Pro. As you can probably tell, they sound pretty good, right? But unfortunately, I can't say the same thing for the same old 720p FaceTime HD webcam in this MacBook. Moving on though, I think another feature we really need to cover that falls more in the category of needed changes is the new thermal architecture that the 16-inch MacBook Pro features. Like I said at the top of this review, the previous generation MacBook Pro just was not the best laptop for creative professionals for a variety of reasons. One was the keyboard reliability and another was performance. Now, the 15-inch MacBook Pro that this replaces severely underperformed compared to the competition due to just not having raw power right out the gate due to just worse components. But most importantly, it was severely thermally throttled, meaning that these computers were being limited in terms of how well they could perform because it couldn't handle the heat. Now thankfully, I could say that this is not the case with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So using Geekbench 5 as a reference, the 16-inch MacBook Pro scores 7% higher on the multi-core test than the 15-inch MacBook with the same exact Intel Core i9 processor. Out of context, that doesn't really sound like a big deal or a big gain, but when you realize that the only difference between these processors is the cooling, it really illustrates the benefit of better cooling. Now, if that doesn't work for you, another more real world example would be video editing. One process that really relies on the CPU in Final Cut Pro is when you transcode imported video. And when you do that, it puts the CPU under intensive load for an extended period of time. Now, because you have better cooling on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the CPU is able to run faster for longer, meaning that it's able to transcode this video and let you get to editing sooner. Now, while we're talking about performance, I think that brings us very nicely to the new AMD Radeon Pro 5000 series graphics that Apple has put in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Across the line, you get AMD Radeon Pro graphics, starting with the 5300M. Now, the model I have here has the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigs of memory, and you could also upgrade it to the same graphics with eight gigs of memory, or to the 5600M, which is a huge leap in performance that has eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory. For me, I think the easiest way to explain the graphical performance of this computer is to say that one, this can render video very quickly, and two, that this thing is a very, very capable gaming machine. Now, I'll show you some footage of Halo, the Master Chief collection running on this machine, and you should see that this thing gets very steady frame rates at you know 1080p settings on medium to high, no problem at all. And honestly, it's just so nice having a computer that I can use Mac on to do video editing, to do my schoolwork, and be able to switch to Windows and confidently boot up a game, not having to worry about this thing and whether it can handle it or not. So yeah, if you do a lot of video editing, these graphics will be very nice to have. And if you like to game on the side like I do, it's also a huge plus. Of course, what better way to enjoy these awesome new graphics than on a beautiful retina display? And the 16-inch MacBook Pro does not disappoint. It carries over all the same great features of the previous generation, including the amazing color accuracy, true tone, and great brightness for all sorts of use, and it just scales it up a bit. Now, as a result of the bigger display, the whole laptop had to be scaled up a bit, and I think Apple has done an excellent job making use of this space. More specifically, I'm referring to the giant 100 kilowatt hour battery that Apple has put in this machine. Now, this is literally the largest battery that you could legally put into a laptop if you want to fly on an airplane. And basically what it means is that you're going to get incredible all day battery life. And I have no complaints. I'm just happy to see it. As you could probably tell, I really like this machine. And I say that because Apple has just made so many improvements across the board in the areas that counts. I'm talking about the keyboard, I'm talking about the speakers, I'm talking about the battery, and I'm talking about the thermals and graphics performance. 
and then double the storage for all the configurations right off the bat and you have a MacBook that is a better value compared to the competition than it has been in a long time. So if you're an Apple user, you need to be in the Apple ecosystem or you really just prefer the Apple ecosystem and you have the cash for this, get it. This is the best Mac notebook you're gonna get. That said, this machine is not perfect. It's only has four USB-C ports, it still doesn't have an SD card slot and it's still kind of pricey relative to the competition. And by that, I'm referring to competitors on Windows that have a more versatile selection of ports and a better price to performance ratio compared to the MacBook. So if you're not limited to Mac OS and you're open to going onto Windows and you don't need Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro, then it's hard for me not to recommend that you look at some of the competition before you pull the trigger on this very expensive machine. All right, guys. That about does it for today's review. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, like it, and please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.